What's up, everyone? Yeah. We're here, man. We're here. What's going on? Man, this is amazing. I'm so happy we're here cooking up on this Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern. This is sick. We got a lot of people from other parts of the world tuning in at a time that's way more uh, helpful for if, you know, if you're in different time zones and whatnot. So it's so amazing to be here with y'all. Um, man, y'all's reaction to the EP is so kind and so sweet. And um, I hope you I hope y'all have been enjoying those two records. And um, I, it's just a pretty exciting time right now. All you know, all things considered. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be performing at uh, Three Points here in Miami, and um, and I, I, you know I'm just moving into a new studio right now. And you know we're releasing stuff, and we, you know we got a lot of, we we got a lot of great stuff happening. Um, so it's so cool. We got Spain in the chat. That's amazing. Worldwide, baby. Um, I wanted to kind of show you guys something. So today we have, um, let me, let me switch the camera here. So today we got the Waldorf the Quantum. And we got the Korg OP6. And, um, okay, sorry, I'm just reading some of the, the comments. So news on the merch. So the merch, uh, merch is going to be, I'm going to announce the merch later this week. Um, we are very close to being ready to go on that. And, and again, guys, there's not too much quantity. There's, there's really not a lot. Um, so I really hope you guys... Um, if you guys really want to get a shirt, just, you know, make sure when I announce it later this week that you guys are on it. Cause again, there's not much. And th this is going to be a one, this is going to be a one of one release. This is just merch that I'm making. I'm paying for this out of my own pocket. I'm doing all of this. And I, I just wanted to create this merch to, to kind of give back to the community. And, and then, you know, we can look fly and we can have, you know, <laughs> we can look fly. We can, um, you know, we can rep the EP on the back of the EP, on the back of the shirt, I have like the EP on it. It looks so crazy. So I'm going to have to show you guys more of that later in the week. Okay, some other comments in the chat here. Someone asked, uh, why the change of time? So what I've kind of decided to do regarding the time thing is, is I really love doing Sunday. But guys, the nighttime thing is like a lot for me because I wake up really early in the morning. So every time we're doing these streams and it's like, 10 o'clock at night for me. It's like, man, I've already been up forever and I'm high. So I'm like really tired. Uh, so I want to switch it up and try some different times and, and just experiment and see w what feels best. Uh, so, you know, three o'clock on a Monday, this is cool for me. I like this. Um, someone in the chat says, may I send you some of my beats? You are my idol. Well, yo, shout out to you, Dope bullish. Um, really appreciate you writing that message, man. And guys, I want to be honest with all you, man. I mean, I would love to hear everyone's music, but I can only have so much input. And uh, where I am right now in my life with everything going on, there's just a lot of input consistently. There's just a lot of things that are try to get my attention. And, and so it's really hard for me to actually give y'all quality time to listen to stuff. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we have Kim in the uh, we have Kim who's like the moderator with Discord, and he's a part of the team. Um, he's going to help put together, and we're going to try to do this in a way where like we'll do like proper listening streams and stuff. So if people submit, then we can kind of do that. Um, I also had this incredible idea that as we continue doing these live streams, like this is free. And I love providing this for everyone. I love showing y'all my work process. You guys have to also imagine that this is incredibly personal for me too. Um, so I want to try finding kind of a middle. I want to try adding another layer to these live streams. So I want to have like 
these free live streams kind of just be more creation focused. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to incentivize the I want to incentivize the community and and everyone that's supporting and kind of helping me build this project out. I want to create a separate live stream um, primarily for uh, Metanoia holders. And then on that stream, I want to do a little bit more smaller live streams and maybe with some uh, and maybe we'll on those live streams, we'll go through other people's music and and maybe we'll kind of dive in deep and I'll, I'll give critiques and whatever. If, if you guys want, if you guys are asking for it and you guys want it, then I can do that kind of stuff. Uh, but for the live stream, for these free live streams, guys, we're just having fun. Um, a comment in the chat says, meta what holders? Okay, so I released an NFT, um, I released an NFT series called Metanoia. You guys can go to metanoia.fun. Let me type it in the chat here. So that's the portal for Metanoia, which is the NFT collection that I did with my friend Nude Robot. And uh, I want to create utility with these NFTs and I want to give back to the community. So for everyone that's a holder of Metanoia, I want to be able to kind of give back to them and kind of connect with them a little bit more directly. So all of this is coming up, guys. I'm doing my best. <laughs> We have a great team, and we're going to get all of this figured out sooner than later. Um, I see another comment here. It says, can you please use from Furka Denna 97 says, can you please use Plux or Haven VST in this live? So, you know, I would love to. The other day when I did a stream, I was actually trying to use... Um, I was trying to use, because uh, I, I thought I had purchased a few, but I guess the only one that's coming up for me is Haven. So in a future live stream, we're going to be touching on Pluck and Haven, and we're going to be diving in and making some music with those VSTs. Shout out my friend Illmine. Okay, guys, let's get into cooking up. I think too much talking, too much talking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got a message in the chat that says, Carlo, could you go over your setup one of these streams? Nothing too in detail, but just a quick run through. I mean, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, we will do that. Um, I'll show you guys what I got. <laughs> uh, I'll definitely do that next stream. So hold me to it. Next stream, I'll show you guys a little bit more of an in-depth thing. I wanted to get a separate camera and kind of have it be a freehand camera where I can like hold it and show y'all stuff. But I think that um, I think that that might be. I just I'm dealing with too much shit, y'all. I'm doing my best. <laughs> so to get another camera and do that is uh, we'll get to it. Man, you all are asking some great questions. Um, F Rhyme asks, uh, I, I know only very basic music theory. Do you think it's important to know all the chords and rules in theory? Well, my answer to that is no. Um, quick shout out to Excellent Audio. That's what's up. Huge supporters of their plugins. My God. Um, but back to your question regarding theory. Theory's cool. When I grew up and I was learning piano since I was a kid, you know, I tried learning theory. I had a few different teachers and, and, but honestly, guys, um, never really super clicked for me. Um, I, 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 I always, what I did good in theory is when I had to close my eyes and I had to play back a melody that the teacher was showing me. And that was always really fun. But when, when I hear the word theory, I start thinking of like, notation and a bunch of stuff and I don't really care for that for me I've always I've always kind of grounded what I do and how I create just based off of feeling so I would say theory's cool and it's helpful but like no nah, I would say just listen and um follow your intuition 
Okay, maybe last question on the chat here. We got, should I invest in a vocal booth? My room sounds like ass and I wanted that pro sound. Okay, so it's not real. Okay, the vocal booth is going to help you. But guys, I have to remind you, like um, everything that y'all ever heard of me from 10 years ago, as early as Crew Love to as recent as After Hours, all of those vocals were not recorded in a booth, okay? This is really important for y'all to understand. There was no booth. We, everything was just recorded in a wide open room with insulation exposed. And there was, it sounded like we were, like there was no, <laughs> there was no sound proofing. It was like I had these big Genelec speakers in a small room, guys. And uh, even when I'm recording now, more recently, if I were to think of that, we're just, I'm recording in a wide open room all the time. Um, so a vocal booth is helpful. So what I'll say to add on to this is like, if you have a vocal booth and you're in a room and you're isolated and you can kind of get a great source, phenomenal. That's, that's awesome. But the reality is, is that, you know, I, for example, I, a lot of the times when I'm making stuff, I, I don't have access to that because I'm usually creating uh, not in professional studios. I just prefer working in home studios so much more. Um, and then what, what you can really do to make your, your vocals way better is like just processing. You know, make sure you're utilizing gates. So for example, I'm even speaking to y'all on this mic right here. And I'm running through a DBX 286S mic preamp processor. And I'm, I'm using everything. I'm using the gate. I'm using the compressor. I'm using the de -esser. I'm using everything. So you got to just figure to tweak things out. And I mentioned about this mic and about that processor I'm using because this room I'm in right now is very noisy, guys. We got the fridge in the back. It sounds like a, a fan is going off and... And a lot of stuff in the house is really loud and echoey, but, you know, as long as you learn how to tweak things and gate things, compress things, and you just kind of tastefully touch things up, you should be able to get things in a great place. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I think I'll leave it, I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, two more comments I see. Someone says, so I really went back to hardware, huh? And then another one said, so tell, tell us more about the gate. Okay, so regarding hardware, yeah, I have a lot of hardware all around me, y'all, but I'm really still all in the box. So I'm using a lot of this hardware to more have fun and trigger sounds instantly. Uh, but just to be really transparent with you guys, a great majority of everything I do is entirely in the box. So just take that for what it's worth. And regarding gating, when you have any sound, whether it's a vocal or an instrument or a synthesizer, you may not want to have the full dynamic range be available on output. So what you do is you put a gate and you just make sure you are kind of capturing the moments that are the most important and then all of the softer sounds, you kind of want to filter that out. You want that to gently duck. So something... Um, to give you guys an idea of how much reduction I'm talking about when we're speaking on a lead vocal, you can do a lot with three to six dBs of gating. If you can, you don't even need to do too much more than that. You can gate and reduce by nine dBs, 12 dBs. You can go further, you can go to infinity. But honestly, this is what, I'm, this is what I wanna share with y'all is that you can just do just a little bit and it really goes a long way because it makes the vocals that do come through that much more special. And so I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the Arvox from Waves. It's a phenomenal compressor that they released like 10 years ago, more. And they have a gate function on the left-hand side of that plugin. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell. And when I don't use it, I use a I use another gate before it. Uh, but one way or another, I'm always gating vocals and I'm not doing much. Just a touch, guys. Just a touch. Uh, and regarding floating spaces, just ask after EQ or before when you put the gate in. 
So with the gate, I like to try to make the signal on the EQ side of things. I try to do as much reduction. Uh, I never try to do additive EQ earlier on in the chain. I try to do subtractive EQ earlier on in the chain. So just before the gate, I like to have an EQ and I like to make sure it filtered and get it kind of where it needs to be. Um, once I do that, then I'll follow that up with a gate and then I'll follow that up with a compressor just to give you guys an idea of what that is. Um, okay, sick. So I'm gonna switch the, uh, I'm gonna switch the camera here, y'all, to the top end. So yeah, like I was saying, we got the Quantum here and we got the OP6. These synthesizers are so cool. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I haven't had too much success playing with the Quantum. I, I don't know why. I haven't had the most, it's cool. Like, it, it sounds great, but, I don't know. Okay, guys, I got it. we we got to start cooking up because we do, we don't have we only have so much time. We really only have maybe another forty five minutes to maybe an hour at most. So let's get cooking, man. Let's just let's jump in and start making some stuff here. Um. Okay, let's do it. So right now on this Quantum, I have it uh, on ARP. I'm scrolling through all the presets and I'm, I'm looking for all the cool ARP sounds. So let's just kind of go through a couple sounds and let's see what sticks. That's kind of fire. That's cool. It's really good. Let's keep searching for sounds. Because I want... Guys, this is something I want to be clear with you. It doesn't have to be perfect, but... It should definitely make you do the, the ugly face where you're like, ooh, that's sick, you know? So, <laughs> not literally, but like, you know, it's cool. Like, that sounded great, but let's keep going through some other sounds and see if there's some magic in here. Oh, and something I want to mention to y'all. Check this out. So, on the right of, uh, the, of this keyboard, there's a compress... There's a compress knob here, so check this out. If I, if I turn it off. That gets cool. Check out the compressor. Let me turn down the volume. Well, that patch is a terrible example to use it. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, the compressor knob on this is crazy because it just, you know, just brings everything up. Actually, I don't know if y'all remember, I don't know if y'all remember this, but um, earlier when we were on the pre-show, I was actually playing a patch on the OP6. It sounded crazy. I'm going to go to it right now and play. Man, that's crazy. That's a, such a great sound. Um, right now, let's open up. Let, let's get a groove going. So I'm kind of feeling a little bit, man, I don't want to say a genre, but I'm kind of feeling a little bit like, I want to do something like, 
I'm, I'm so bad with genres, guys, but I want to do something like garagey. I kind of want to like have that like super fast drum thing. Maybe we'll turn the BPM up here. Maybe we'll go up to 140 just for now. We'll just go super crazy. And I'm looking through my my library of of samples and loops I have, and I'm just gonna try to grab. Uh, I'm just gonna grab a kick. Nah, this is all so. I I don't even want to go that way. Hold on one second. Let's try this. I love that hi-hat. Love this patch. That's crazy. Let's take let, let's take a moment away from from that sound. And I just got contact 7 the other day. And I don't know if y'all have got a chance to mess with this yet. Have y'all? One of the things I found that I love about it is now on this interface here, you can click on on any sound and on the right it opens a list of presets and you literally just click on any preset and it instantly gives you a preview of what it sounds like. And guys, this is huge because one of my biggest concerns with contact was anytime you wanted to hear something, you would have to wait for it to load. 
That's just not, that's too slow. But so check this out now. Oh, I'm just going to click on this. See, I'm browsing through libraries. I'm clicking on, well, not all these are loading. I wonder why. That's crazy. I tried, a, I tried a lot of different libraries and they all did it. And that was the first library that did it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mute the quantum here for a second. And let's keep browsing through sounds. I'm feeling like a, something vocally. Oh, that's literally sick. Let's load that one. Y'all see how long it takes to load? I mean, come on. We're on a brand new MacBook Pro fully loaded. It should, nothing should take this long to load. Come on. That's the loop. That's the loop. Done. One time. One time. Let's go. Let's so we're going to grab this progression. We're going to move this over. We're going to check on the left here. So the length is 8. We're locked in. I'm going to press command 2, get a little bit zoom out on the thing. I'm going to do command shift U. I'm going to this is fine just as the settings are. Apply. And, you know, we don't want it to be perfectly quantized, but we just want that help to kind of lock it in a little bit. We're, we, we're going to move, we're going to manually kind of drag some of the ends out, and maybe we'll pull this one back in a little bit. Let's hit play now. Hey, we got somebody on the chat. Tom Yomai, he says, batch resave. That, you know, that could, thank you, man. That, that might be it. Because I, I feel like I've heard people, I've heard, I've, I feel like I've heard people mention that, like, that, that sometimes stuff like that can happen. So by doing that, it might help. I'm going to jump on this OP6 now. And let's see what we can do. Yo, so that sounds crazy, but it's not quite it. So let's open another instance of Contact 7, and let's go take a look at some of the, let's use, let's use Playbox. 
And I don't know if you guys have got a chance to mess with Playbox yet, but my God, Playbox is ridiculous. Perfect. I just double clicked that one. Oh, I see some people in the chat saying that I'm not going to turn this into a UK tr drill beat and all this kind of stuff. Guys, I'm not trying to do any genre specific thing at all. So I, I mentioned it earlier, but what I really kind of meant by that was more drum wise. It would just be cool to have something that's in that world. But I'm not actually creating, trying to think that I want it to be that. You know what I mean? So it's like I just, I try not to be too serious with any reference points ever. Okay, so the key, I believe, is a flat minor. So let's try that out. A flat minor. Let's try another another patch here. No. Okay, let's try to play this on top of what we have. And let's go. Okay, guys. That's not going to work either. Um, let's try Massive X. And I think what I'm going to focus on right now is just getting a bass sound. And let's, let's run through this wake library down here and let's try some of these patches out.
Okay, this is a, such a great sound. I'm gonna remember it. Let's keep scrolling through some more bass sounds. That's cool. Try another library here. Arpeggiator on this. Let's see what's up. But I gotta be honest, I, I like I like doing the ARP stuff, but none of these sounds have been the right one yet. But this is nothing to be stressing out about. This is just part of of what it is when you're when you're trying to find the magic, you know, you just gotta search. I'm going to go back to the first option. This was the closest for sure. And we're just going to hold down the root, so I'm just going to copy the MIDI data from the other melody part and remove the upper octave and let's just bring, I think this is actually the perfect uh, key. Let's hit play and see how it sounds. So y'all hear this bass right now? We're gonna try a new plugin from um We're gonna try a new plugin from Unison. Have y'all have y'all seen this plugin?
This plugin is sick. So basically, you select what you have. We have a base, and we select the formula. This bass sounds can really honestly almost do any of these formulas. Um, let's stay with aggressive for a second and we're going to hit one button and it's going to throw out a chain. Let's hear how it sounds. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. And we might as well play it with the vocals too. We got to hear it all together. Let's go. Beautiful. Let's try another one. It's my acai bowl. Okay, so now that we got that bass sounding crazy, distorted, and just wild, let's throw Volcano 3, which is one of my favorite filters. Um, not my only filter, but one of my favorites, no doubt. We're going to just bring this way down here, maybe just around 300 hertz. Let's see. <laughs> We're going to throw some modulation in it now. Just a little bit. Half of that. We're going to open another LFO. We're going to give it more broader movement. Ooh. Let's try raising this up double. Yo, a blueberry fell on my keyboard. <laughs> That's what I roll. So now we got this incredible bass. It's moving. We we gotta bring it. We we're gonna we're gonna reduce that overall movement. Let's hear how this sounds. Now we're gonna move the filter around. Find the sweet spot. Y'all see how when the filter's not on, let's let's move this filter all the way up. That's just eating the vocals on top. We don't want that. We the vocals are really beautiful. The hi hat is giving us a rhythm right now. That may change in a moment, but this bass has to. So so just to explain to y'all, you, you know it's. You see how I'm pushing it, I'm distorting it, I'm doing this crazy shit. The, the sound doctor was two buttons, guys. And then all I did was tweak it a little bit to taste. I just brought the width up at the end here. This plugin is phenomenal, so definitely check it out if y'all haven't. And then you guys see how I put the filter after that just to control. We don't want those high frequencies. Because we want to save room for all the other beautiful sounds. Yo, shout out General Dennis. Thanks so much for joining the stream. And then we got a great comment in the chat from I am Tandy. It says, sounds like a, sounds like a usual re-space with distortion and filter. And you are absolutely right. You can call it a re-space if you want. Um... It doesn't matter. You can call it anything you guys want. But to me, this was just a beautiful patch. It had a lot of great movement in it. Uh, distorted it, obviously, just to get it coming out a little bit more. And then we filtered again and just brought it back to that Reese bass world. And, and that's what's up. But it's not a Reese bass. I think the Reese bass is a specific sample that everyone uses or whatnot. But yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we got
got the melody, we got the vocal, we got the bass, we got the drum, we got the hi-hat. What we're going to do now is I would just love to find these specific drum samples I'm trying to find. Just give me a second here, guys. Oh shit, I think I might have found it. what I'm talking about. You know what we'll do? Even though I love that loop just as it is, I really don't even hear it being too much different. I'm, I'm always surprised when I do this, and I, I like to show you guys this, but I, I've done it before on the stream, but I, I want to make it a point here. You know, when you throw anything into any sampler, it could be Ableton's samplers. They have a few options. Output has a crazy sampler that I got to download. And um, the output, I, I, it's like the arcade sampler that I got to just spend some time. I got to download. I got to buy it. I got to figure it out. But my point of, of saying all this is like, throw, make stuff, throw it in there and remix it back, right? Because you're gonna find some really cool things. So we got this chopped up. It's, it's, pretty, good, it's pretty good in terms of how it's doing it. This is every tom, I, I don't want that. I want a little bit more past the one single tom hit. So let's hit play right now. I'm going to hit record. Let's hit play and let's see if we can capture something cool. Even even that, guys. Even that. So I it's the same thing as the original loop. Um, however, it's just not as perfect. And to me, I like it. I like how the way, the way that this sounds better. And we don't need, we don't need, we just need one section of that loop and we can crop it out. And then obviously we can maybe move this a little bit more on. I would say let's 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 run through that drum drum library one more time and see if we find a cool sound. 
One more time. anything else in here let's try let's try this break folder but all these there we go I used this same uh, sound on uh, divine perfection and on energy off the new EP that I just released, y'all. Uh, on Energy, I chopped up all the vocals on um, on a sa on sampler, and then I played it back live, just because I wanted to give it a different sound a little bit. Uh, okay, so we found this drum break in here. Let's see if we can uh, layer this this music we currently have. Let's see if we can layer any of it with with any of these chops. <laughs> two bar loop here let's crop it let's zoom out let's somewhat quantize it let's turn down the velocity of the last sample Yo, what's up to all the first time chat joiners? This is amazing. I love it. We got Zentago saying some really nice things. And we got Alex Proko Prokopovich saying, what's up? She said, they said, hey. They said, hey. And then we got Pasta Miko saying, you inspire the shit out of me and we're from the same city. Oh, that's what's up. Is that Calgary? <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, let's get back to this. Okay, we're going to do two things here. We're going to get out of this view. We're going to go into the main uh, browser view. Let's hit record. And then after you hit record, just drag everything out. And then boom. I saw somebody in the chat said, try bringing the toms down an octave. So let's try that. Nah, that's not gonna work. 
Okay, we're gonna do something here now. Check this out. So we got the drums. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw the drums up on top. We got the music. We can just throw that here. We got this. Let me just make sure this is all drums. Perfect. Let's throw this in a group. We now have a drum group. We got a music group. Let's remove the top MIDI channel. Someone said one semitone on the toms. Yeah, let's try it. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it to fit a little bit more in pocket here. jumps between transposing 5 dB to, to zero. And I think the easiest way to actually program this in, uh, so check this out. I'm gonna double click on the Tom sampler MIDI data up here. I'll solo it out too. And we're gonna hit duplicate. So two bars are gonna, or probably four bars are gonna be one uh, pitch. And then we're gonna hit duplicate one last time and we're gonna have a total of eight. We're gonna go here and we can, we're gonna draw the automation on the MIDI clip loop. And let's get this in here. This should be five. And then we're gonna drag out the end. And then now we have it locked in. Now I'm just quickly just moving levels up and down. Something worth telling y'all is I really love to move levels using the up and down button on the keyboard. I don't know if y'all have tried this, but on the on the keyboard here, if you guys can see on the on the screen, all, all I'm doing a lot of the times when I'm working on stuff, I'll just click on a, a, a volume level and and then quickly I'm just hitting up and down and I'm just making the level blend really quick and fast and. Anyways, this is just how I like to do things, anyways. And uh, I see a comment in the chat. Uh, it moves by one dB, and, and yeah, that's correct. It, it moves by one. And if you hold shift, then you can go into increments of 0.1. But really, you go into increments when you need to. You just gotta hold shift for that. And otherwise, just up and down will be perfect. <laughs> Okay, I, I have some pretty cool ideas we're gonna do in a second, but first thing first is let's just arrange this just for a second. Let's throw XO 
in the mix. I love this plugin. We're going to go on the presets and we are just going to go random. Let's loop this section right here and let's hit play and let's just run through some different rhythms and see what elements really stick. To be honest with y'all, all we're really looking for at this point is a kick, which is super easy to program. I think it's just literally four on the floor, but I'm kind of curious to see what are some other random rhythms. So of course we can do this in a lot of different ways. We could just do this manually, which is what I've done my entire life. But now the last few years, we've been so lucky to have such incredible plugins that really just make the process of creating fun, easy, and fast. So, and so this is why you guys see me working this way because it, it's just fun. It's a fun way to work. Okay, so let's hit play. We're gonna run through some random things. Let's make sure the host is synced and let's hit play and run through some things. Love that. So I don't think of oh man. I hope that everything is 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 the stream still working, y'all? I hope the stream didn't go down. Oh, okay. Woo! Thank goodness. Uh I thought the stream might have just went down. Okay, let's do this. So this sound is fire, and I don't see this as the main sound. I'm seeing this a little bit more in the background, almost leading up. So I'll show you guys what I'm kind of thinking right now. I'm gonna play it on the intro, actually. And let's have some fun. Let's try, like, okay, right now I could do this exactly, like I know what I would do. I would throw a distortion, I would throw an EQ, I would throw a, uh, maybe a delay, I would, kind of automate some, I would do some things basically to do what I need to do to the sound that we're talking about. But we got Sound Doctor in the mix. Let's, let's, let's give it a shot and see what it can give us back. So I have it set to drums here. Let's change the formula to, let's try lo-fi. Okay, so now let's throw another plugin from Excellent Audio. Let's throw in the Retro Color. This plugin is just phenomenal, man. Um, and what, what, what we want to do specifically is we want to kind of make sure the low end's rolled off because there's an 808. And we, we could just change the kick drum, but I actually like that 808. I just don't want the low end information to come out. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna throw utility on it. And uh, we basically only really want it to play for one moment. So let's hit automation and let's hit play off the top. I definitely don't want it to start full volume. So I, I know that already. I'm gonna throw the utility all the way off. <laughs> 